Good morning, everybody, and you're all very welcome to church this morning, wherever you're Zooming from. It's lovely to see you all. Um, just before we begin, just a few um, uh, little notices. Um, there's a, quite a few things beginning to happen this week. We've got our trial walking group on Monday. Um, we've got Dulce's funeral on Tuesday. We've got Real to Real on Wednesday. We've got the church meeting on Thursday and we've got the normal coffee morning on Friday. Most of all that, of course, uh, on Zoom, apart from the walking group <laughs> who are meeting on Zoom, actually meeting in real life. All the details are in your weekly um, letter. So if you're not sure of anything, please do check that. And I've also been told that um, the songs of praise on television today I think around one o'clock, I haven't checked it out myself, is apparently uh, featuring or focusing on Swansea. So you might want to check that out as well. Um, but uh, let's all for a moment greet one another with our normal Zoom wave. And uh, I'm delighted to introduce to you this morning uh, our own Reverend Dr. Noel Davis, who's going to lead our worship. And Noel, I hand over to you. Thanks very much and um, welcome everybody to this worship for this Sunday. <clears throat> Jesus said, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This week is Christian Aid Week, and next Thursday will be Ascension Day, the day when we celebrate Jesus being lifted up from the earth. Today, then, we'll explore what this means for us and for today's world, and praise the God who exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have ascended beyond horizons our eyes can see, and further than the limits our minds can reach no longer restricted in one place, you are seated on the throne of heaven and present in all places. Though now we cannot ascend to where you are, still raise our hopes and hearts that our discipleship in this world may be touched with the glory of heaven and our lives be promises of the fullness of the life to come. Amen. Our first hymn, sorry, I've now lost my text. Our first hymn celebrates our ascending Lord and is sung, interestingly, by the congregation in the Wesley Near Room in Bristol, the oldest Wesley building in Britain. And it was sung on Wesley Day 2012. We sing the praise of Jesus of our ascending Lord. Jesus, Father, and Savior. 
and now a prayer of praise and confession. In his birth of Mary, in his becoming a man, in the deeds of mercy, in the power of his love, in the passion of his crucifixion, in the victory of his resurrection, in the miracle of his presence among his disciples, he accomplished his work. Jesus is Lord. In the glory of his ascension, in the power of his sitting at the right hand of the Father, in the hope of his supremacy over all principalities and powers, in the strength of the name that is above every name, in the bond of his intercession which pleads for us, he accomplished his work, Jesus is Lord. In his victory over the power of armaments, in his victory over the cruelty of those in authority, in his victory over the greed of nations, in his victory over hunger and poverty, in his victory over war and oppression, in his victory over sin and death, he accomplished his work, Jesus is Lord. This is our faith. Jesus is head over all, thing, over all things for the church. Forgive us, God, that we fail to live under his lordship, that we fail to struggle to establish his kingdom, that we fail to live in the hope of his conquest. And grant to us who believe your unconquerable love in Jesus. Amen. And now, if you will, join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading includes two accounts of the ascension of Jesus, both probably by the same author, Luke the Evangelist, the first comes from the end of his gospel, and the second comes from the beginning of Acts of the Apostles. And Frida and Grace are going to read these for us. Then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the news of the same event as we have just heard read to us in the gospel reading. Although it has a different emphasis and some added details, but it's, as Noel said, from the same author, the Acts of the Apostles, of course, which is a total misnomer because it's not about the Acts of the Apostles at all, it's about the Acts of the Ascended Jesus Christ. 
But there we are, Acts for short, chapter 1 and the verses 6 to 11. When the apostles met together, they asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? Jesus replied to them, it is not for you to know the times and the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my disciples in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come to you again in the same way as he has been taken from you. May God give us the exact understanding of his word. I'm not sure that this next sentence should follow Frida's reading, but there we are. What I've written is, the account of the ascension of Jesus can be quite baffling to our modern minds. These things don't happen now. Why should we believe that it happened then? And if it did, what does it all mean? Today, three images from different times and cultures, hopefully, will help us understand some key aspects of ascension. The first slide comes from Africa. It tells a simple story. The disciples are gathered and Jesus, their master and risen savior, was lifted up before their eyes. It seems to me that this image isn't just about then, it's about now too. I imagine this to be in Ghana or Nigeria, for example, where there's a vibrant Christian community and where there's a powerful witness to the good news of Jesus in what is often a hostile environment for Christians. The center of gravity of world Christianity is no longer in Europe and the West, but in Africa and Asia. That's where Christianity is most vibrant and lively. This is where Christianity is growing. We can learn from their experience of the Lordship of Jesus and the power of the Spirit at work in human lives, communities and nations. For the early disciples in Acts and for disciples today, wherever we are gathering, watching and waiting, Jesus is the one who was and is lifted up gathering all peoples still to himself, and we, like them, must gaze and wonder and wait. So while some music is playing, look at this image. Do you see yourself among these watching and waiting disciples? What would you see? What would they and you be waiting for.
Our second image is an orthodox icon. It represents the holy apostles and followers of Jesus, women among them, worshipping their Lord who has been lifted up into the heavens to be with God and to be worshipped by prophets, saints and martyrs throughout all the ages. For many of us, the Orthodox churches, Greek, Russian, Oriental and many others, represent a very different experience of the church and its worship from ours. Icons play a key role in their prayer and worship. They're not intended to be exact photographic images, rather they seek to represent spiritual experience and spiritual truth. They're intended to stimulate our imagination to see God in Jesus in new ways. But they also connect us with the centuries of Christian faith and worship. Through these images, we are brought into the experience of the saints throughout the centuries. So this image connects us to the experience of those first disciples and welcomes us into the communion of the apostles and saints who are the foundation of the church in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Or as Paul says to the Ephesians, you are built on the foundation of the apostles with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. So as we listen to another piece of short music, what does Jesus sit at the right hand of God to be worshipped by all the apostles and saints? What does that mean for us today? What strikes me particularly about this third image, which is a more traditional Western representation of the biblical story, is that we only see the feet of Jesus. But if you look carefully, his feet bear the scars of crucifixion. At the beginning of Christian Aid Week, we give thanks that the crucified and risen Lord who ascends and sits at the right hand of God, still bears the scars of the sacrificial cost of love for those who suffer injustice and violence. People have been scarred by what life has done to them through the COVID-19 pandemic and through human violence, injustice and oppression. In places like India, Myanmar, Syria, Yemen, can know that Jesus still bears the scars of human suffering. As W. H. Vanston's hymn puts it, therefore, he who thee reveals hangs, O Father, from that tree, helpless, and the nails and thorns Tell what thy love must be, thou art God, 
whose arms of love aching spent the world sustain. Jesus himself spoke about his being lifted up from the earth in crucifixion and ascension and made a powerful promise, I will draw all peoples to myself. By gathering us to him, we are being lifted up too, raised to new possibilities, not just us, but all peoples, in suffering and joy, in despair and hope, now as much as then. So as we listen to this last piece of music, what does it mean to believe that Jesus, who is lifted up, still bears the marks of human suffering and can still draw all peoples to himself. A meditation by the Catholic priest Michel Coist, written more than 50 years ago now, reminds us what ascension could mean for us. It's about perspective, how we see. He says, I would like to rise very high, Lord, above my city, above my world, above time. I would like to purify my glance and borrow your eyes. I would then understand that my life is an imperceptible breath in this great hole. And falling on my knees, I would know that the life of this world is a long throb of love towards love eternal. When we've seen ourselves and the world in this way, we are then called to wait, as the disciples waited, for God to empower us for witness and service through the Spirit, and so become God's agents of change, inspired by the love, justice and reconciliation of God's kingdom. And remembering that, we now pray for others and for ourselves. Let us pray. At the beginning of Christian Aid Week, we pray for those who live in poverty, who face injustice and suffer oppression, and for those who seek to stand for equality, fairness, justice and freedom for all. Especially today, we pray for Christian aid and its partners around the world, and those with us who work to act, pray and give to support its work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a fragmented and divided world, 
We pray for peace, reconciliation and unity, especially in the nations of the Middle East and particularly in Israel, Palestine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially today for those who have been elected to serve in the Senate, especially those who will serve this city. We ask that God will guide them in all they do and decide, that God's will will be done among us, and that the kingdom may come more fully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the unity of the people of God here in Swansea, in these nations and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for those in our hearts and minds, especially those who are members of our church community, who suffer loss and bereavement, pain and anxiety. May God give them peace, comfort, strength and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Our final reading is from Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 18 to 23. I pray that your inward eyes may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope to which he calls you. How rich and glorious is the share he offers you among his people in their inheritance and how vast are the resources of his power open to us who have faith. His mighty strength was seen at work when he raised Christ from the dead and enthroned him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all government and authority, all power and dominion, and any title of sovereignty that commands allegiance, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He put all things in subjection beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who is filling the universe in all its parts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our final hymn celebrates that faith. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it.
And so, our closing prayer. Ascended Lord, we have watched and we shall wait in expectation and hope, knowing that you still send your spirit to empower your people. Empower us to be workers and witnesses in your kingdom. And as we go on our way, may God, our creator, redeemer and renewer, bless us with peace, joy and love, now and always. Amen. Noel, can I thank you very much for leading our worship this morning, especially no. for um, the, the interesting way you use those images to help us understand the ascension. Thank you, all of thank us, you. all of you who came this morning. Thank you to those who were doing the technical stuff behind the scenes. If you're leaving us now, we look forward to seeing you next week. Otherwise, uh, in a few moments, we'll go into our coffee and chat groups.